This video talks about the specific antifungal drug called caspofungin. Now, before we talk about caspofungin more specifically, let's talk about um, the all about all the antifungal drugs, like a general overview about all the antifungal drugs, so that you can compare and contrast as we're going along. Now, there's three drugs that work at the level of the cell wall or cell membrane. The first one is amphotericin B, which makes a hole on the cell wall, allows leakage of the substances from the cytoplasm to the outside of the cell, thus destroying the cell. The next one is nystatin, which inhibits the protein ergosterol, which is very much similar to cholesterol, and as a result does not let cell wall to be made, again disrupting the cell membrane. The next one is beta-glucan. Inhibiting beta-glucan, they're inhibiting the synthesis of cell wall. And the drug that, allow, that is capable of doing that is our caspofungin. So that's the drug that we're going to be talking about in details. But let's talk about the other drugs before we talk about caspofungin more specifically. What about a pyrimidin synthesis? Pyrimidin synthesis in the and in the fungus is prevented by the antifungal drug that's flucytosin, which converts the nucleotides to 5-fluorouracil by using the enzyme cytosine deaminase. As a result, not letting pyrimidine to be made, that's how the flucytosin works. It inhibits the pyrimidine synthesis. What about microtubules? By inhibiting microtubules, uh, it does not let mitosis to happen, and the drug that inhibits microtubules and as a result inhibits mitosis is our griseofulvin. Okay? There are other al drugs also which inhibits protein synthesis in our um, fungus. For example, squalene is converted to linosterol. Linosterol is converted to ergosterol. Squalene to linosterol is inhibited by the drug squalene epoxidase, and the drug that inhibits squalene epoxidase is going to be terbinafine. And the drug that inhibits linosterol to ergosterol is going to be P450, and the drug here is going to be the azoles, the ketoconazoles, the fluconazoles, okay? And that's how they inhibit this process from squalene to ergosterol, and we know ergosterol is going to be making uh, the cell wall, as a result preventing cell wall synthesis, as a result preventing um, the cell from replication. Now, those are the general overview. Now let's talk about specifically uh, about caspofungin, and I'll show you a very interesting and fun way to remember um, how you can recall what caspofungin is used for. Okay, so caspofungin is, it starts with the letter C, so it must be used for candida. Candida is used, any, any antifungus works on candida, right? So we're going to be using candida here. That's for the C. What about the A? For A, it's used for aspergillus, okay? For aspergillus, we are using caspofungin, and it's going to be invasive, okay? Invasive aspergillosis, we use caspofungin. Now, why have a circled F? That's because F is for flushing. This is the toxicity of caspofungin. It causes flushing. What about the G? G causes GI upset, okay? GI upset is caused by the G. That's why I have circle G. So you see how, e just remembering some of the letters on the drug, you can kind of pretty much come up with the entire, um, entire mechanism, clinical use, toxicities from the, from the name itself. Again, G also has G, which can also stand for glucan, so in caspofungin, we're preventing the drug beta-glucan, inhibiting cell wall synthesis.